Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to cover filtering data through indices in R, and we're going to get a little bit more detail than we have in the past. Um, so before we kick off here, again, make sure your environment, your global environment in the top right is empty. If not, hit the broom. Uh, we're going to hit Control L, clear out our nodes, and of course, we're going to open up a new R script. Okay, so we're going to put in the nodes here, you know, today we'll explore how R... Uh, filters data through indices. Uh, and again, we'll put that note here, right? You know, notes. Um, if you get weird answers, make sure your global variables are cleared before uh, you start running code. Okay, so let's just start off here with creating some data. So let's create some data. Um, we've been using age and income, so let's continue to do this here. So we'll create a vector of ages, I don't know, 18, 76, 52, 38, 25, and let's say 16. And we'll run that. Um, and then we'll also create another one called income. And again here, let's say, I don't know, create this vector, say 32. 0, 102, 78, 82, and 25. And I'll note here that both these vectors are the same length. And that might be important later, depending on how we do some filtering. So it should be. We'll run that. Uh, and so, you know, now let's filter these out. So let's filter um, the income data so that we only have income over 50. Okay, so let's just call this, you know, high income. If you make more than 50,000, it's going to be high income. We'll call it high underscore INC. Uh, and we're going to assign here uh, our income data. And we're going to say, okay, income is going to be greater than 50. We'll run that here. And then to see this, we'll just type in print uh, high income. Uh, and you can see down here, right, we have 102, 78, 82. All these are greater than 50. Again, if you look back at our income here, these are the only ones that are going to be greater than 50. Um, but the key takeaway here though, is that this piece inside the code here, right? So this income that is going to be greater than 50, uh, this is actually going to be a Boolean value. So if you haven't done Boolean values, it's going to be either true or false here. So to show this to you, we're gonna say, okay, bool value, and we're gonna assign that income greater than 50. So just taking that piece of code and running that. And then if you print out, right, bool value, you'll end up seeing, right, it says false, false, true, 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 false. So again, if you go to income, right, it's 32 greater than 50, it's gonna be false, then false. Then 102 is greater than, so this is a true, 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 and then the last one is false. So you can see that these Boolean values actually line up to that uh, inequality or that statement here that we're kind of testing for. And again here, I'm gonna to continue to remind you guys how R works here. So remember uh, that R always functions, I guess I won't say functions, but always runs, runs vectors, okay? So what I mean by this is that realistically here, um, it's going to be taking these values so we'll copy and paste them down here. Uh, and it's gonna be saying, you know, are, is this vector, and I'm gonna use square brackets just because I like the way it looks better when talking about vectors. Uh, this is basically saying, okay, is this vector greater than a second vector, which is going to be all 50s? And there's gonna be six of these because there's six values in the vector we're looking at. And so realistically here, right, there's no such thing as a scalar in R. So the calculations behind the scenes, when you think about this, it's really taking this vector and it's comparing it to this second vector, which is just all 50s. So just keep that in mind here as how R actually functions. And another piece here that's just kind of interesting and I think is important to understand here as we're talking about, you know, R using entire vectors to do calculations here, is that the operations uh, in R are actually functions in themselves. So the greater than sign inside of this is going to be an actual function. And I'm gonna prove this to you guys so you can see how this work, you know. Um, you know, let's test uh, is five greater than 12, okay? 
And we can do this again by using the actual function here. So use double quotes and do greater than, which is the function. It's gonna take two arguments, five and 12. So again, these are not scalars. These are just one kind of one number inside of a vector here. And if we run that, it's gonna say false, okay? So it returns, returns false here. So it returns that Boolean value. Again, which is what comes out of these. Uh, let's do the same thing. So, you know, let's use the greater than function, but instead let's just swap these and say 12 and five. If you run these, again, as you can see down here in our output, it says true. So it returns true. So just to kind of take right here. Um, so in our example, uh, we used a greater than function on two on two vectors. So one with our our numbers in it. So we're gonna call this our you know our income here. And the other one was all 50s. Okay, so essentially it's gonna create an entire second vector as we talked about. And then the other important point here is it returns a vector of Boolean values, uh, meaning right true or false. Again, in R, everything has to be in capitals, so it's crucial for there. Um, again, of the same size vector as the two vectors it was comparing. And then finally here, R returns um, the Boolean value uh, based on the index. So the indexing of this. So like we talked about before when we went up here real quick, uh, we knew that we were gonna have true, false, true, false, right? So I guess you can see it here. So when we have false, false, true, 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 false, it goes in and it uses the indices here. So it pulls that index number and says, okay, I'm gonna pull three, four, and five, and then it actually returns them. So the three, four, and five returned with 102, 78, and 82. Again, that three, four, and five is the index here. So R uses indexing to actually return these values. I think it's a key understanding here of how R works. It'll help you troubleshoot kind of things later on. Um, and why is this important? So you can actually use the Boolean values to pull values uh, from another vector. So you're thinking, right, this doesn't make any sense. But let's do an example here. So let's say I want the age of everyone who makes more than 50,000. So in our case, just 50. Um, so to do this right, we're gonna need two vectors. We're gonna need, so we need two vectors. We need one for the age and one for the income here. So we can look them both up. It's kind of like a VLOOKUP, I guess. You can think about it maybe in, <laughs> in Excel for some of you coming from the business side. So to do this, what we can do is say, okay, income, bool, which is gonna be the Boolean for the income. And we do income greater than 50 as we did before. And we run that. And then now we can select the ages based off of the Boolean values. So let's just say, you know, what age are you rich at? So we'll call it the rich age. And we'll say age of the income. Okay, so we take this value, which we turned out to be the Boolean values of income that are gonna be greater than 50. We plug it down here. But again, we're gonna be referencing the age vector now, okay? So we'll run that. And we'll print out, you know, rich age and see what we ended up getting here. Okay, and it says rich age is gonna be 52, 38, and 25. So let's go back and look at these real quick. So if you look at income here, we wanna find out who's making more than 50. And of course, the third person is gonna be the first one. And that's gonna to correspond to the age and the other vector. So the first person is going to be 52, right? And that shows up down here, as we expect. Uh, the second person making over 50, is gonna be this person, which is in the fourth spot in this indices. So you go back to the age vector and you can count one, two, three, four. Fourth person is 38. That's gonna return down here. And then finally, right, the only other person that's making more than 50 is gonna be in the one, two, three, four, fifth position. So we go into the age vector and we count one, two, three, four, five. And this person is going to be 25. So we answered the question, about how old are people making more than $50,000? And of course the answer that we saw was going to be, you know, ages 52, 38, and 25. So 
this was a lot of steps here, which you might not realize, but this was too many steps really to get this. And you can code it this way. It's really easy to read, easy to understand. Um, you know, but we we can code this, you know, much simpler, much shorter. And I'll show you how to do that here. So we're gonna say rich age, just like above. We're gonna call it short. And we're gonna say, okay, age, income greater than 50. So what you'll notice that we changed here is we're gonna say, okay, we want this inequality that income has to be greater than 50, but we wanna pull it from the age vector. So in our very first example, instead of age here, we had income. So we looked up, you know, what are the incomes? So here, from this, which, which income from this income vector and which one of those is greater than 50? In this case, we're saying, you know, which income is greater than 50 based on the age vector here. And we can run this and then we can print this out. So rich age short. And again, we get the same answer. You can see comparing the top one to the bottom one here, 52, 38, and 25. But this is a much shorter way to write it compared to doing, you know, two separate lines here. Uh, we can just plug it in and just do one line fairly quickly. So something else, you know, we can do here. So you can also use index filtering to assign new values. So let's say we want to change anyone who has zero income to the minimum annual income of 15. So what do I mean by this? Let's say you're doing some sort of data modeling problem here, right? Uh, and it's reported income and somebody reports they have zero income. So they're probably retired, for example. We'll just assume everybody's of adult age and they can go in and let's just say you can get retirement or you can get you know, unemployment or something. Let's just say, for example, that minimum is going to be 15,000. So when we're doing our modeling here, we know that there's gonna be people that have zero income, but realistically they're bringing in 15,000. It just might come in the source of a social program or a government program here. Again, this is purely for kind of fun and example. Um, but let's print out um, our income beforehand because we wanna see what the values look like before we make changes to them. So these are values four we run these like we saw above we have 32 0 102 78 82 and 25 right but we're going to print something else below and then we can look at the two and compare them so to do this we're going to put in here income and we're going to say okay from the income vector which is going to be this outside piece here and again you could do this again with age or a different vector if you wanted so you can cross them as i talked about before but we're gonna say if income is equal to zero, so in R, you need two equal signs, which means equal to. Um, if you just had one, it's almost the same as an assignment operator, which we saw before, which is the arrow with the dash. But again, in R, it's best practice to use the arrow and the dash, or the less than dash. Um, anyways, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna assign 15 to that. So we're gonna go into this income vector. We're gonna check and see you know, the equality here is income equal to zero. If it is, assign 15 to that. And let's run that. And then now we're gonna print out income because we just changed it. And you'll see down here, we have the same numbers to start with, 32, 32, but now we have this zero, which is the only one inside this vector, and it gets changed to 15. And you could also do this with missing values. If you had missing values or something or some special value, right? Uh, you could swap this out. So for example, which I'm not gonna run this code, but okay, we'll say pseudo code. We could handle missing values or NAs here. So we call them NAs in R, which was from the last video. Uh, if we have NAs in there, you know, you could swap it out to be something like this, where you could say, you know, if this is equal to NA, and then you could replace it with some special value. You could say zero, or you could say like 9999, right? Something crazy, just hold it in there. But just another example of how and why you would use that. Um, and I just want to make a note here to wrap this video up as a conclusion here. Um, the second value, you know, of the vector that we looked at went from 0 to 15, which we saw. However, be careful, and I'll put this in capitals here, be careful with code, you know, like this one, because uh, we actually ended up overwriting, you know, our original data here. And what I mean by this is when we went in here and now we print out income right a second time. So we print it out first just to see what it was like originally. In this case, we're overwriting income and we're gonna reset it to zero. And then we assign 15 to those zeros. We end up overwriting income. And then we print it out again, right? We're printing the same thing a second time. 
Uh, and the second time, right, the numbers are different now because all the zeros are 15. So there are different ways to get around this. I'm not going to cover it in this video quite yet, but there are ways you could do this. Uh, but just be careful when you write code that if you overwrite something, you make a note of it, or you have a way to recoup it. So if you were going to import that data from somewhere, or you're going to create that data from somewhere, right, you know, know that, okay, I created it up here, or maybe there was um, some sort of file called like read.csv. This is how you read it in CSV files, so data. Um, but just remember that you can recreate that or create a second one. So you could, you know, create a second one and say, you know, income to, and you could assign something such as income to it. And then you could actually overwrite that. And then you would have a second income for that. So that's just kind of an idea of what you would do to make that different. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Just covering a few kind of tips and tricks on how our functions and again, how to use some of these inequalities to kind of filter out your data using uh, different types of qualities or inequalities. And again, using some indices and kind of figuring out how our functions as a whole. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.